The Gale of the Red Mist is a dangerous place, and weapons are key to an anime vampire's survival, as the old saying goes. Welcome to a comprehensive weapon guide for Code Vein. I'll be splitting this up into multiple parts based on weapon class. It will include where to find these weapons, my opinions on their general usefulness, and the damage they deal for a character at level 1, level 50, level 100, level 200, and the max level of 300. In this video, we will cover bayonets. For the sake of accurate comparison, I'll be using the Queen Slayer Blood Code with the Willpower Up, Strength Plus Willpower Up, Mind Plus Willpower Up, and the Mind Up Passives. This will give us an A rating in every stat that is relevant to weapons, and thus allow us to wield every single weapon in the game with the same build. I would not recommend using this build for exploring, since you can only equip two weapons at a time, and it misses out on a few really useful passives and active buffs. It's better to have a setup that leans into your chosen weapon's strengths and your own personal playstyle. I'll be throwing around some terms as I describe the weapons and their moves, so let's make sure there isn't any confusion. The weak attack is just that, a quicker, low damage, low stamina cost attack. The weak attack chain is simply the series of attacks that happen when you repeatedly press the weak attack button. Sometimes it's just two swings, sometimes it's three swings, and sometimes it's four swings. Then the animations loop around back to the first swing. The sprinting attack is a weak attack you use while sprinting. Shocking, I know. I usually won't go out of my way to say anything about the sprinting attacks unless it's something special. Same for the rolling attacks. The animation changes depending on whether you dodge forwards, backwards, or to the sides, but they don't really fit into the weak attack chain, or they just act as a substitute for the first swing. A combo weak attack is a unique move each weapon has that you can do by holding the dash button and pressing weak attack while not moving your character. It's usually a lunging attack that covers a lot of ground, an attack that knocks enemies down, a wide sweeping attack, or a combination of these. The uncharged heavy attack is what you get when you tap the heavy attack button. The fully charged heavy is when you hold the heavy attack button for a few seconds. There is no partial charge mechanic in Code Vein. If you let go of the heavy attack button too soon, you will just perform an uncharged heavy attack. Feel free to practice the different moves to your heart's content on the training dummy back at home base. Speaking of the training dummy at home base, I'll be performing all of the damage tests on it. This is worth mentioning because the dummy has neither any elemental resistances nor elemental weaknesses. Some weapons have innate elemental damage and will be more effective against some enemies and weaker against others. I'll mention this again when we get to the individual weapons with built-in elemental damage. Lastly, all of the weapons were tested without any transformations since this can change the damage dramatically based on your level, what passives you have equipped, and what you're fighting. You can think of the damage numbers I provide as a rough estimate for a generic character rather than the highest possible damage you can achieve with the right preparations. Okay, now that the preliminary stuff has been cleared up, let's jump right in. Ah uh, yes, the bayonets, the class of weapon with the lowest weight and the longest reach. However, they also feature some of the lowest damage and weirdest hitboxes, so a certain degree of finesse and patience is required. On the topic of damage, don't be fooled by the numbers in the stats screen. While the melee damage is accurate, each bayonet has a different multiplier for how much damage the shots deal. Fortunately, I've done all the legwork for you. Bayonets make a good secondary weapon, since you can use their shots to draw enemies into range of your main weapon. Bayonets can be divided into three main categories, sniper style, spread style, and shotgun style. I'll go more into detail when we talk about the individual weapons. How about we start that analysis now, hmm? The Queen Slayer Bayonet. Our first bayonet is a sniper style bayonet with excellent range. Better still, you can find a pre-upgraded Queen Slayer bayonet in the player memories about two-thirds of the way through the area. The route is kind of complicated, so follow the route being shown now. It's quite easy to overlook, so be wary. Fortunately, you don't need any keys or even need to kill anything guarding the chest containing the Queen Slayer bayonet. Well, you strictly don't have to, but it makes it easier. One interesting tidbit is this bayonet has the fastest bullet speed on the uncharged heavy attack. If you need to tag a fast-moving enemy, this bayonet is useful. The weak attack chain is four quick strikes, ending with a backstep slash. The combo weak attack is a backstep thrust that knocks enemies down. The uncharged heavy is a quick low damage shot, while the fully charged heavy is a slower, higher damage shot. I always pick up the Queen Slayer bayonet since it starts out upgraded and deals reasonable enough damage. Moreover, the ability to knock enemies down is somewhat rare for bayonets, so this weapon gets bonus points for that. If you need a solid, sniper-style bayonet with minimum investment, be sure to try this one out. The Brodia. Bro Brodia. Brodia? Brodia. Here we have another good sniper-style bayonet, Mia's personal bayonet. 
As such, you will need to trade valuables worth 50 friendship points with her to get it. The Brody is basically a direct upgrade to the Queenslayer Bayonet, featuring better weight, higher damage, and higher stat requirements. The Weak Attack Chain is another four strikes, ending with a backstep slash. The Combo Weak Attack is a lunging slash. The Uncharged Heavy is a quick low damage shot, while the Fully Charged Heavy is a slower, higher damage shot. I'm only somewhat enthusiastic about the Brodia compared to the Queen Slayer Bayonet. It lacks the ability to throw enemies around, but that's not necessarily a deal breaker. The higher damage is nice, but it loses some utility because of the higher stat requirements and the farming required to trade for it. The Brodia is definitely good, but not one of my favorites. The Riot Breaker! Now we've got our first and only vanilla shotgun! You find a plus three upgraded Riot Breaker near the second checkpoint in the dried up trenches, guarded by two elephant nosed giant lost. The weak attack chain is three diagonal slashes. The combo weak attack is a lunging slash. The uncharged heavy is a quick low damage blast, while the fully charged heavy is a slower, higher damage blast. The Riot Breaker features respectable melee damage, and the tight spread means you don't have to worry about aiming beyond being close enough for the shot to hit home. It is also stellar at staggering enemies thanks to the fully charged heavy blast. This powered up shotgun blast pierces enemies, so you can make good use of single shot damage buffs like Flashing Fang and Blow of Madness. The Riot Breaker is one of my favorite bayonets, so I might be slightly biased in my recommendation. The biggest weaknesses of the Riot Breaker is that it lacks a way to throw enemies around in somewhat short range. All the same, it is a fun and stylish way to slay Lost. The Bayonet! The Bayonet Bayonet is our first spread-style bayonet. It can only be found by looting a Devour version from a chest in the Den of Darkness Depths. It's close to the start of the area, so just follow the route shown now to pick it up. Once you pick up the one from the Depths, Rin will sell an infinite amount at her shop. The moveset is good, with only slightly weird hitboxes on the melee swings, and good burst damage on the fully charged heavy attacks when at point-blank range. Further away than point-blank range, and it starts to get iffy. The weak attack chain is two alternating left and right swings. The combo weak attack is a backstep thrust that knocks enemies down. The uncharged heavy is a single low damage shot, while the fully charged heavy is a horizontal spread shot that deals increased damage if all of the bullets hit your target. The bayonet bayonet is a solid choice of weapon early on. I recommend it. The rubelite piercer. And now we shatter all barriers of disappointment with the rubelite piercer. This sniper-style bayonet is no joke the third worst weapon in the game. You can loot the Rubelite Piercer from a chest in the first part of the cathedral near the center pillar of a circular tower. As always, just follow this route from the first checkpoint. There's also a slow transformed Rubelite Piercer in the Zero District Depths if you really want two terrible bayonets. So why is this thing so bad? Well, the moveset is awkward to use and the damage is absolutely pitiful. One of the reasons the damage is so bad is because it's split damage. The Rubelite Piercer has innate blood damage, which is the most commonly resisted element. Even if you were fighting something weak to blood damage, you'd find the damage is among the lowest of all the bayonets. Now about that awkward moveset. The weak attack chain is a quick poke followed by a double spin attack that leaves you wide open followed by a backstep slash. The combo weak attack is a backstep thrust that can knock enemies down. The Uncharged Heavy is a quick low damage shot, while the Fully Charged Heavy is an equally quick higher damage shot. The most effective way to fight is to use the first quick poke of the weak attack chain and then take a step, resetting the chain. It should look something like this. Poke step, poke step, poke step, repeated ad nauseum until your opponent is dead. Ah, this bayonet is dumb, let's move on. The Argent Wolf Bayonet. Here we have the rarest weapon in the entire game, the Argent Wolf Bayonet. It only drops from Cerberus Knights wielding bayonets. A grand total of three of them can be found near the Frenzied Attendant boss fight. It is technically a sniper-style bayonet, but the uncharged heavy attack is a slow-moving orb with short range. There are a few other sniper-style bayonets with this orb shot, but since the fully charged heavy is your standard sniper shot, I've grouped them all together with the other sniper-style bayonets. Anyways, back to the Argent Wolf bayonet. The weak attack chain is three strikes ending in a backstep slash. The combo weak attack is a lunging slash. The uncharged heavy is a short range orb, while the fully charged heavy is a higher damage sniper shot. I really like this bayonet, partially because I did the farming to get one and I want to show it off. The damage is solid, the appearance is sharp, and the exclusivity is, um, exclusive. Recommendations all around. The Burning Disaster. 
I may be sort of lied about there being three types of bayonets. The Burning Disaster is a very unique bayonet that is more like a combination grenade launcher and flamethrower. More on that in a bit. You acquire the Burning Disaster upon defeat of Bladebearer and Cannoneer. This thing lives up to its name as it has built-in fire damage on the melee attacks. But that's not why you use the Burning Disaster. You use it for the stupidly fun flamethrower attack. It's impractical and locks you in place for a long while, but it deals a ton of damage, especially with the right buffs. I mean, look at this! And this is at level 1! The weak attack chain is three diagonal slashes. The combo weak attack is a lunging slash. The uncharged heavy is a short-range grenade shot, while the fully charged heavy is a full-on flamethrower that roasts enemies. All things considered, this weapon is fun to use, but otherwise pretty bad. You can only really melt enemies that aren't aware of your presence. However, you can usually kill off those enemies before they wake up anyways. I can't seriously recommend the Burning Disaster beyond using it for the memes. The Sunset Bayonet. How about we change to something a bit more pedestrian, hmm? The Sunset Bayonet is a pretty lackluster sniper-style bayonet, thanks to its pitiful damage. The Sunset Bayonet drops from killing the small bayonet-wielding Lost wearing tattered red scarves. This means it's a pretty common bayonet that shouldn't take too long to farm out if you want one. The weak attack chain is four quick strikes, ending with a backstep slash. The combo weak attack is a lunging slash. The uncharged heavy is a quick low damage shot, while the fully charged heavy is a slower higher damage shot. As you can see from the chart, the damage is quite low. Honestly, if you want a good sniper style bayonet, just grab the Queen Slayer bayonet from the player memories and save some upgrade materials. The Black Bayonet. Next up is another sniper style bayonet. The Black Bayonet has good damage, but only drops from Hunters and Black wielding bayonets. There's also a slow transformed Black Bayonet located in the Void District Depths map, but it isn't upgraded beyond being transformed. The weak attack chain is three somewhat slower slashes. The combo weak attack is a backstep thrust that knocks enemies down. The uncharged heavy is a short range orb shot, while the fully charged heavy is a slower, higher damage shot. This bayonet is pretty solid, but a bit of a pain to acquire. It earns bonus points for being able to knock enemies down. All in all, not a bad bayonet for the stat requirements. Libertador! Now, we move on to the Libertador, the bayonet with the highest shot damage. This is basically a modified black bayonet used by Ava as her personal weapon. This means lots of trading valuables with her until you have 50 friendship points required for the Libertador. The weak attack chain is a quick poke followed by a double spin attack that leaves you wide open, followed by a backstep slash. The combo weak attack is a lunging slash. The uncharged heavy is a short range orb shot, while the fully charged heavy is a slower, higher damage shot. So the melee moveset is a bit awkward to use, the valuable trading is annoying, but the shot damage is outstanding. If you want a good rubelite piercer, then look no further. The Lost Bayonet Next up is the first bayonet you acquire in your journey, the Lost Bayonet. It's the only other spread-style bayonet in the game, as it is a corrupted variant of the Bayonet Bayonet. You can find the Lost Bayonet in a chest in the starting area, nearby where you find the Heavy Axe. The chest is just sitting out in the open, so finding it is pretty much guaranteed. The weak attack chain is two alternating left and right swings. The combo weak attack is a lunging slash. The uncharged heavy is a single low damage shot, while the fully charged heavy is a horizontal spread shot that deals increased damage if all the bullets hit your target. This bayonet is serviceable, but not overly spectacular. The Bloody Snow Our first DLC bayonet is the Bloody Snow, a sniper style bayonet with an interesting fully charged shot. You acquire the Bloody Snow by defeating Frozen Empress with three revives or fewer while wielding any bayonet. Truthfully, this bayonet has a very greedy dexterity and willpower requirement, meaning very few blood codes will be able to use it effectively. The weak attack chain is three strikes, ending with a backstep slash. The combo weak attack is a lunging slash. The uncharged heavy is a single quick shot, while the fully charged heavy is a rapid fire burst of six shots in a row that also adds an ice buff to your weapon. I know this is supposed to be in-game content, but the stat requirements truly limit an otherwise fun bayonet. It's just a shame that the only burst fire bayonet has such extreme stat requirements. The Thunderbolt! Time for our final bayonet, the Thunderbolt. It is the only other true shotgun besides the Riot Breaker in the game. You acquire the Thunderbolt by defeating the Lord of Thunder with three revives or fewer while wielding any bayonet. The weak attack chain is alternating left and right swings. The combo weak attack is a lunging slash. 
The uncharged heavy is a short-range shotgun blast, while the fully charged heavy is a very slow-moving orb shot that also buffs your weapon with lightning. The fully charged heavy is so bad for sniping. I would not recommend using it. That shot is slow enough to still be dangerous to use at close range. I would advise against using it at all unless you need the lightning buff for your melee attacks. Nevertheless, the Thunderbolt still gets a recommendation from me. And that's got it, every bayonet in code vein. Special thanks to Blade of Want, The Big O, and my friends on Discord for helping with this guide. I hope this video was helpful and informative. Stay tuned for more code vein guides, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye!